And last but not least is Maurice Lamar. And <laughs> Marty has mentored me in for all of these years and still continues to do so. It is the art of collaboration and negotiation because as the on-site art director for Imaginary New Zealand, a lot, a lot of my partners are not artists, they're not designers, and they don't think anything like we do. They're, uh, you know, the, the people in merchandising, uh, worry about how many face-outs they get on the walls or how many square feet of cash wrap area they have. The people in foods worry about how many burgers they can get through there and how many cash registers they have. And so you, you really have to work hard to understand their business as well as our own and how to come to some negotiation and both get the best thing out of it. And I think that our team has really mastered that. We just opened our new Star Trader shop, which has everything merchandise could ever want, but it also has a great <coughs> X-Wing speeding through and flying saucers and all kinds of great, great show, which really, you know, they understand too, that sells merchandise. People are so inspired, it's impulse to want to buy something in such a great place. The Great Plaza Inn restaurant that John Hench designed originally, uh, when Foods came to me about 15 years ago. It was really horrifying because every time John and I would come down to Disneyland, we'd go and eat at this restaurant and he'd talk about how he had designed this and where all the elements came from and the coffee patterns from New Orleans and the big stained glass canopy was from someplace else, or Adam Street, I think it was in LA. And then Foods came to me and said, Kim, we want to completely gut and remodel the closet in the restaurant. <laughs> oh my God. But I went to him and told him, and he said, well, that's good, that's good. They still want to keep it. They just want to remodel the queue line, so we'll, we'll work together and we'll make it work. And that was something great about John, is he, he was never an egotist about the, his things changing. He always just thought we had to work with them and make it work. So we did get it. It was down to dirt, and he came down and walked around kind of stunned the day that, the, that he saw it. But we put it back together and put even more of his, um, what do you call it, riverboat gothic details to it. We really, really overdid it. And that's one thing, is every time we change or do anything to see that, we try to bring it back even better than it was before, but with the same story and intent. And this is a little sneak peek at the new Jolly Holiday Bakery we're working on right now with foods. A um, little, little bit of uh, the Jolly Holiday scene from Mary Poppins, and we're going to have a really great bakery there on Main Street in the old Plaza Pavilion building. Kind of get that open up again. So that's just a little bit about how these old kids on the block. <laughs> have allowed me to teach all these new kids on the block how to the care and feeding of Disneyland and all the different things that have been taught to me through the years. Thank you. Story and name for the original 
Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And recently he was the co-concept designer and show writer for the award-winning Toy Story Midway Mania attraction for Disney's Hollywood Studios and Disney's California Adventure. Asked him sometime about directing the recording for Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Please welcome one of the really fun people to work with. Oh, sorry again, Kevin, I meant fun. <laughs> Kevin Rafferty. Everybody doing okay out there? Yeah. Yeah. A little over time, but is everybody good with that? Yeah. Here's this thing. So, uh, it was funny when Owen was up here, when we were in Glendale and he had some of his vignettes out on display and I said, wow, this is pretty amazing stuff, Owen, you know, can you, you think you can come to my house and make my royal throne sparkle? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it was, it was, it's amazing, I was uh, working uh, at the, uh, the floor at uh, the Cars Line display in the Parks and Resorts area and so many people came up to me and said, you know, how did you get your start? What do I need to do to become an Imagineer? We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but it, it, my dream was I came to Disneyland, I was an art major, and I wanted to be a, a, a Disney artist. And they said when I had my interview, what would you like to do? I said, I want to be a Disney artist. I want to make a world of change. I want to do great things. And they said, great, you can start in the dish room. So at least I got a job. No worries, right? I did love it. I, I grew up in Orange County. I love the park. It was really uh, fun working in the dish room and getting to know uh, the park and working there. And as you saw in the video, it, it just kind of changed me. I, I realized how much people loved Disneyland as I did growing up. And um, so there I am, uh, circa about 1974. And what I love about that picture is look at the background, Matrix of Wonderland. It was still there when that picture was taken. <laughs> So, uh, and then I, I moved on from there and went to Club 33 for a couple of years and met my beautiful wife, Patty, there. She was uh, working in the parking lot and then the Lincoln, um, it, it bring home some Mr. Lincoln Walt Disney story. And there she is over there, still weather, 30 something years later. She's now working in media relations at Disneyland. It's like the circle of life, we're keeping it all going in the park. But, so, you know.